Um, I, I've listened to the show a long time, and you know, I'm, I'm an older person. I'm 55 years old. I did some research in psychology mm-hmm. when I was in graduate school. I'm ABD, and I, I listen and, and I hear you talking to people, and you keep trying to revert to rationality with people. Mm-hmm. And even even on the calls today, I'm listening and. A couple of times, Hector wanted to step in when the first call that I got from Brazil, I forget his name. You know, Hector wanted to ask the person, how does that make you feel to think that there is no creator? Oh, and I walked all and over you. And you cut him off. Oh, oh I'm so no. sorry, man. And, and, no, no. And, and, and in a sense, it almost feels like you've wasted a great opportunity to no. personally learn from Hector about a, a different aspect of belief. And, and I think it's there, but it's not coming through. And like I said, I was going to suggest that you consider this stuff more when you have these conversations with the people, because I, I do think that, you know, my own personal research and then, you know, the next 26 years of just watching people talk and how they argue. And you can see that a lot of our beliefs are reverse engineered to justify an emotional position that we need to hold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You want okay. to talk about that a more Hector? You know, it's just like you, you, you analyze analyze the way that what was I'm sorry, I didn't catch the guy's name. The guy from Brazil, his name was. I I, I don't remember what? his name, but but yeah, I can I can speak a little bit to that. First of all, I did try to ask him that. And and he didn't he didn't respond. But but yeah, fear is a is a primary motivator. I mean you know, people have written about this. Um, Ernest Becker's American anthropologist wrote about like like one of the one of the biggest um, quandaries emotionally of being human is that we have such an awareness of self because the uh, largely because of the size of our cortex, we know that we exist um, more so than any other animal. In so far as we can test that, we know we exist. Yet we have. Uh, the understanding that one day we're going to just dissolve back into the strata and be food for worms. That's a terrifying proposition for for an entity that knows it exists to the extent that we do. It's terrifying. So what does religion do? It promises that that's not going to happen. And what does it do? It, 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 it taps into this uh, very old primate psychology to give us a salve for that fear. It says, yeah, there, there's actually, you know, a powerful male in the sky who's going to protect us from death. He's going to protect us from our enemies. He's going to protect us from starvation. He's going to provide for us. Um, so, so it serves, it serves uh, to, uh, you know, uh, soothe our existential fears. That's, that's one big thing. Um, so that's, that's major. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering if you have noticed this uh, phenomenon of an indication of when that kicks in. For example, specifically when someone won't answer a question that's directly asked of them. I wonder if you notice how every time you ask a question that they can't deal with or their narrative won't support or it won't handle, they literally run away from the question. Sure. And you know, if you've seen that in your clinical research, in your clinical practice, how people who don't want to believe something really, really strongly refuse to even engage in the possibility of the question. Sure, because the answer is the answer generates fear. So of course they're going to try to yeah. skirt it, either just not yeah. answer it or or come up with a huge blockade of motivated reasoning exactly. to get around it and yes. explanations or or just that I, I don't even know what went on with that that just barrage of like kitchen set, like throwing one question another question another question just to evade and so it was I kind of dissociated a little bit. It was so I, mind-numbing. You actually, wow. you know, there was a uh, there's a. But that is. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. I was going to say there's a Christian gentleman who's been coming into the ACA and talking with me, and he's an apologist, and he's very nice. We sit down and talk, and uh, he and I are reading a book together. Um, mm-hmm. yes. But one of the things that uh, he said, and and that the and that person, uh, Atangelo, I believe his name was, uh, said was you know Bayesian logic uh, points toward God. And it's funny because it reminds me of my own way out because the way that I stopped, you know, the, the, the way that I worked my way out is the better way to say it. The way that I worked my way out, I, um, I would ask a question and then a whole barrage of 
unrelated things were sent in and, you know, it stopped me. Well, what if there's no God? Well, you know, here's all of this, you know, random stuff. And it's just, it's shocking, you know? Um, and I, I think part of it is, hey, I read this, I saw this, it sounds really good, I'm going to repeat it. But they don't take the time to think about it. And another is not understanding how logic but, works. Can I have one more? Can I just yeah, in? please. Why? But, see, but I think the important thing that's interesting to think about is why don't they think about it? There's what? a reason they don't think about it, and it is patterned, right? There's there's a set of things that people tend not to think about, and it does follow patterns. It's not random. And that's really important to yeah. understand. Sure, things that generate fear, people are going to avoid. That's kind of a exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and of course there are there are people uh, when you put the capacity to feel fear on the natural curve, you can map it onto the natural curve. Some people feel very little fear. Most of us are somewhat in the yeah. middle, and a lot of people feel feel a lot of fear. You know, the conservative Christian evangelical types tend to be on the more fearful end. So that's that's the draw to these religions that have the salvation narrative to them. Is it it it, it addresses those fears among that populace? So so fear is is right at the heart of all of it for sure. Hmm. I, I like yeah, but, while, okay, I, while I totally agree. I I think back to myself as a believer, and. I didn't think I was not asking questions because I was afraid. Um, when I went through it, maybe my maybe my experience is just different, but when I went through it, I didn't know that something was broken or wrong, and so I didn't know to question in the first place. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah. You, there was a lack of information, right? Yeah, you've got to take your car. Like, you, well. you your car starts <laughs> clicking or something happens, right. and then you take it... To the um, to the mechanic, and so if you have this toolbox full of tools that allow for that, sure, then the what you're using, what you're applying, is the best that you have, and it's not getting you to reality. While I agree that uh, fear is a piece, I didn't, I didn't stay there. I think but then again, you afraid. came out of it. So I did. Maybe I you maybe you represent mistake. the less fearful a... end of the natural. Oh, sorry about that, Mark. Maybe you represent God. the. <laughs> You're on the less fearful end of the natural curve. That's why you could exactly. Is that where you were thinking? Um, I don't know. I'm yeah. just. I'm not that special, dude. That's You're like special. no, yeah, no. no. Special. I, 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 I think this. I think this is. You know, I've listened to you for a while, and I think this is one of the fundamental mistakes that you personally make. Ooh, tell me. And once again, no, I'm telling you, know, no, no, no. I know. I know. Everybody says you know you shouldn't. You shouldn't go after someone individually. But like I said, I approach this stuff from psychology, and all psychology is individual. Oh, Scott, right? dude, I want to be the best version yeah. of me that I can. That Tear me down. I want it. I, I, I get. This. No, I know. I, I get this, and I know. I, I, I agree. You do, but I think you. Uh, you. You think that other people are more like you than they are. Ooh, and I yeah. think what separates a lot of atheists, we're just psychologically, we're born different. No. And I know that, you know, I, I disagree with you. I, I just think you're wrong. Straight up, you know, factually wrong. And I think if you research the issue more, I think you would understand more what I'm saying. It's not a philosophical position. This is a empirical position. And it you know, has to do with what Hector is talking about on, the, the, on those scales of fear. Some of us are born more fearful. Some of us are born less fearful. Like when I think about my own transition from a believer to a non-believer, it literally happened on, on a car ride to my place of work, which is In-N-Out Burger, in three minutes. I made a realization that what if it's all made up? And it's like the, the, the bricks, the edifice fell down around me, and all of a sudden I wasn't a believer. I know other people do very different transitions, mm -hmm. but... I, when I go back and think about it, and like I said, I'm 54 years old now. I made this transition when I was 19, and I, the more I think about, it, the more I think about it, it I, I just it comes to me that it was inevitable. I was going to be an atheist. Well, I listen, was not wired. I was not wired to believe. I, I, can I and jump I, in and, and comment on before yeah. we get too far away from your topic? I think, yes. I think, yeah, people do differ in terms of how much they have like endogenous fear. I do think that's the case. I think we, we, as a species, we have far more similarities than differences. But there are some differences on the natural curve. But I can tell you, as a psychologist who has spent his career specializing in PTSD, I can tell you people can overcome fear. It takes work. 
It takes discipline. It takes practice. It takes, it takes being extremely rational, fiercely rational. Um, and to let okay. the rational what, what, thinking, what, what? intel gathering part of the brain take the wheel. So, See, so I'm so glad you're on this show because now I can ask you, so what, what allows a person to do that? What allows a person to step into that fear and to be rational? It's so this chicken egg problem, right? It's where, where do you break into it as a psychologist, as a clinician? And is it possible to break into it with normal people? <laughs> break know, into street, what with I normal mean, people? The whole street epistemology phenomenon, right, is, is that kind of idea. If you can get people to engage in conversation, you might be able to get to them. But in my experience, people withdraw from the conversation once they start to get too close to these fear places, to, these, you know, to, the, to this essence of who they are and who they believe they are and they're specialists in the world. They literally run away from the conversation. Some people do, and some people do when they fear, and this is something I, we just had a conversation with David Oliverio on this. It, you know, a lot of people do when they fear that they're going against the tribe because, look, we, we evolved in these close-knit groups of hunter-gatherer tribes that needed, we needed each other to survive. We, imagine if, if any of us were to be placed in the middle of the Serengeti naked with no tools, no weapons, how long would we survive without our tribe? Not long at all. This was the pressure that we faced um, for most of our evolution. So, so yep. we've ended up we've ended up with an an intense fear of being abandoned by the tribe. I think for a lot of people, that that is what is involved in like rejecting these facts because because it, it involves going against what the tribe thinks, and that's terrifying. So much of politics, so much of religion is based on that fear. I, oh, okay. Let's, okay. let's say I agree with that one hundred percent. Is that born or is that learned? It's both. I mean, that's let's not. That's one thing I really do not like to falsely dichotomize. Whether is it nature versus okay. it's both. Yeah, it's 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 learned and it's it's we have we have a predilection for it um, genetically in the structure of our brain to 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 feel afraid of of alienating ourselves from the tribe. But it also is learned and it's also it's also enforced. I mean, especially when you have doctrines saying don't leave the tribe. You can't leave the that's a sin. Don't go be united in body and mind hundred percent. I can I ask you a question to yeah. kind of probe that a little bit? Please. So um I've I've met a lot of atheists and in meeting them just because they came to a God conclusion does not mean that they're rational and it doesn't mean that they're skeptics. It doesn't mean that they value reason or evidence or logic. Um, there are lots of atheists who believe in ghosts and spirit healing, crystals and, and auras and the idea that they can perform magic and do things that are supernatural. That There are still supernatural believers among atheists. And I don't think that... Uh, coming to the conclusion that there is no God necessarily means that you have those tools. It just means that you came to the conclusion about one thing. Um, so while I understand what you're saying, I feel like it – is it more I, – I, like I'm, I'm monologuing. I'm not asking you the question here. The question is, is it more that they are in a place that they are not you know, needing the tribe – because it feels like um, once the tribe falls away or once you can exist outside of the tribe, it becomes easier to do that. You know, if the tribe kicks you out, then you're, you're, you're there. But um, I, I see so many people who find themselves in these spiritual kind of woo communities and they didn't lose their magical thinking. They just dropped the God part. I mean... Maybe that's... I, so so um, there was a question in there? Yes. The question is... Um, and it's based on Scott, so maybe I should be asking Scott. Scott, uh, you were saying no, that people. It's okay. Yeah. No, the question was uh, Scott was saying that people are born more likely to be religious, and that you can like. Were you saying that some people just can't be can, reasoned can, out? Can of I it? clarify that? Please, please do. I, I, I'm suggesting that we're all born on a spectrum, mm -hmm. and so you know, we're, we're, each of us to, to, to different degrees feel fear or are more likely to have, you know, born and not, you know, innate and, and nurtured. And, you know, the interesting thing as if, if one were on to be a scientist about it is to just create a taxonomy of those things and some way to register those things. And because, you know, I don't think we're all either born or it's, I it didn't say, so, I hope I didn't come across as that simplistic, right? Well, I, I, I was trying to kind of explore it a little bit. I'm glad that you're clarifying. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, there are psychological traits that makes that makes 
the transition to being religious easier, you know, and I think, I think, uh, the authoritarian mindset, you know, really, really kind of looking up to authority. That's something that can vary on the natural curve, you know, um, uh, n- having difficulty with integrative complexity, like, like combining different ideas that some may be, may be con- you know, somewhat contradictory as opposed to seeing things in black and white. You know, so so political conservatives tend to be on the the far end of like seeing things in black and white. But what if we model yep. the bef- Comic behavior? Comic book world order. Can't that? Can't we break through that if we're modeling? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I so Scott. But that's wh- the question, right? Can you? <laughs> and I, I don't know if that's clear that you can break through with everybody. Hector, can you? Most people who, and that's the question of how many can you break through? How many can't you break through? And like, for example, the, the, the gentleman from Brazil. Mm-hmm. Does any do either you think he could be broken through, Scott? Actually, I, I, have, a, I have a great answer to that. <laughs> no, and I don't care. Okay. <laughs> oh, really? Really? Okay. No, I have a, that's a real answer. Yeah. That's no. A really good answer. Yeah, yeah. So, so here's the thing. Um, there are a ton of people who watch this show. This show is for them, right? If I can have a good dialogue that people can see, because maybe they can't have those conversations, or maybe they want to see what it looks like when people have actually thought about it and worked on it and can have an intelligible conversation, where those things go, right? How logic plays out, how people can learn, you know, to use logic, what epistemology is, right? The people that come in, especially the ones that annoy everybody, are the ones who are most like the elders of my church, right? They yeah. exist. Yeah. They exist. Yep. And there's this piece of me that, that shirks away when I think of up to somebody in that authority position. But the fact is, just because they are an elder in a church does not mean that what they're saying deserves reverence. And the people who are watching, right? If somebody's on the fence and somebody is on the fence because of poor reasoning, right? They talk to their pastor, they talk to a church elder, and that church elder says, oh, there is a God you have to understand because of irreducible complexity. That means that this show is important for people to understand why the argument from irreducible complexity is an, is an important one to have. And being able to model that, right? I'm not just modeling you know, for the person I'm talking to, I'm hopefully modeling for the people who are watching to see an atheist engage because I want people to know that you don't need to put forward this angry stereotype all the time, right? That we can be empathetic, that we can be kind, that we can be nurturing and, and that, that we can be different. I mean, look at Hector and I. I, I, I. Do you know how many Latinos are at the ACA? We're growing it, but not a lot, man. <laughs> Thank you. you know? <laughs> I mean, but we're trying. We're trying yeah. because it's important. You know, but it's yeah. not about trying to convince that one person. I'm not going to hang up. I know people say, "Oh, hang up. They're never going to get it." You're missing the point. The point is uh, that we're having okay, the conversation. Okay, but that wasn't my point. Yeah, then I, I mean, totally skipped past it. I apologize. I think it was more of a theoretical <laughs> question, right? Can 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 minds be can minds be changed? Well, I mean, let me throw this out there. Would that be easier to change his mind in Brazil where the Catholic Church has a stranglehold over so much yeah. versus, you know, uh, Finland or something like that where, where uh-huh. you know, there's a tribe of people who think differently ready to receive you, you know. So, so, so yeah, I, I, do think, I do think minds can change. I do think people can be taught to think in more complex ways. I think people can be taught to... Um, to overcome their irrational fears. I think people can be taught to accept mortality for what it is. But, but I, I think you'll agree that you're kind of using an abstract term there, people. You, don't, you surely don't mean all people. And I'm guessing you mean people vary on a degree to which they can be taught and they, they vary on the degree to which they can learn. Yeah, or am I mistaken? Sure. sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, some that, some well, some learn well, easier well, than well. others. Is that's what you're saying? Some learn some learn easier than others. But you you know you do have societies that are very non-religious, like all of Scandinavia, Holland, places like that. That are that religion is just kind of you know mostly irrelevant. Can you completely stomp out religion? Well, I made a case in my first book, like mm, probably not. But you can totally shrink its importance in our day to day life and the ways we govern. To an enormous degree, just look to Scandinavia. That's, Scott, that's a good model. Scott, question. The, the, the thing that you're putting forward is, is the conclusion that 
some people aren't worth talking to, or I'm, I'm just no. trying to, oh, then please. Uh, well, it, 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 I guess that would defend, depend on how you define worth talking to. Um, it, it, if, you're, if you think your goal in engaging the conversation is to reach them, to, commu- to truly communicate with them at some deep level, um, and you know, I hate saying this, given my dissertation that I eventually failed was exactly the opposite. I was trying to prove that everybody could be reached through logic and reason, and the, the main reason we disagreed on anything is because we had differing degrees of information. And what I didn't account for, even though I was doing it in a psychology field, was that the emotional aspect of our beliefs drive almost everything. They do. And but you can do, also we meet... We do, I think, reverse, almost, Sorry. reverse engineer. Uh, and then once again, I, I fell into the same trap I just accused uh, just accused Hector of, of. I said people. And no, it varies to degrees. Some people more than others, right? Reverse engineer our beliefs. And of course, you know, once yeah. one says that, one has to look at one's own beliefs and say, am I reverse engineering all my beliefs? And if I am, <laughs> then... Does truth mean anything? Does it matter? Does science mean anything? Does it matter? Because if not, if n- none of us can reach what anybody would agree is objective in terms of knowledge and understanding of the world, then we can't say anything at all. And nope. That's actually not a place I'm on to go. Not, not true at all. Not true at I all. Disagree. <laughs> well, and, and I'll, I'll explain why that's not true. It's not true because but, science. Uh, I mean, let's uh, well, let's let's break it down on uh, with science, okay. right? Um, can you prove something true with science? The answer is um, no. You, you, can, you and I are going to disagree on the definition of science. The scientific and, method, uh, I, I, a hypothesis, I, 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 you know, testing, no, I, I got you. I observation. Got you. I got you. I, I, I took far too many philosophy of science courses. <laughs> I just go nuts yeah. it. Okay. You know, I, I, Understood. I, I'm fully versed on Popper and you know, Lakatosh Un- Kuhn, okay. you know, Fire Robin. You want to go into all them? I can go on them. I, I, I only want to go into them. All of it is, is, is science is just people getting together to try to understand the world the best they can. There That's is right. no scientific method. That's I mean, there, so, there, and, Scott. you know, the philosophy of science, and this is what Matt Dillahunty always gets wrong, is it's not a normative endeavor. It's an it's analytic endeavor. The, the, the philosophers of science are trying to look at what scientists do, or people who we call scientists, which is, based, it's not arbitrary, but it's, you can't define who's a scientist and who's not. They look and say, what are they doing that has in common and difference from other things that we do as human beings? And so does science? No, science doesn't do anything. People. <laughs> and and that, 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 that's a distinction I think is really, really important because it's a psychological phenomenon when we abstract what certain people do out into this thing called science. Okay. And it removes responsibility from the claim, from the people who make the claim, the people who research the claim, and the people who try to support the claim mm-hmm. to some abstract thing. And so let's let's yeah, wrap it yeah, back I, down I, to the yeah, original sorry. point. So, no, 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 yeah, no. Let's let's, let's let's redirect sorry. down. But, no, that's okay because Scott, what I was going to interject was I'm happy to talk about these things so long as they yeah. are educational for the people who are watching. I don't want to fly over, okay. you know. And yeah. so I I I got you. Yeah, I got the, you. The reason that I but dove my, into my this in the first that, place, Scott, is that yeah. we we measure our knowledge of reality in degrees, not in binary yes or no. Right. Um, if you were to give me sufficient evidence to support a claim, my degree of, um, you know, of, of, of knowing that thing or accepting that thing is true goes up. Right. And so, yeah, yes, but because the, of that, not ignore the fact that it's you, right? If I, I know, I'm you, not ignoring that fact someone, at all. I, I can give someone else the same exact information; they could uh, not, not, not satisfied. Agreed. Which is yeah. why we need to yeah. work together on on having really good tools to be able to discuss things. Yeah. But that that kind of is a sidetrack. What? And I, I know you're not doing I, it on no, purpose, sorry. but I, no, that's okay, man. Sorry, I, <laughs> dude, you're good. You're good. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. All right. I'm just trying to zoom in here because um, the point that I'm trying to make is that I talk about it as capital T and lowercase t truth, right? Capital T truth is something we're always going to strive for but never going to achieve. And if we do achieve it, we won't know that we've achieved it. And I think you would agree with me on that. Yes. Okay. And so if we are operating on degrees, 
right? Degrees of, I mean, you can be 99% on something, but if you're 100%, what you did is closed yourself off to ever finding out that you were wrong. That's why we, ha- right? that's why we have falsifiability in science. Right. And so if you're saying, because I heard you say, right, the reason I brought it to this place is because you said, mm-hmm. if we can't know, then there's no point at all. But to know, in my mind, says capital T truth. And if that's the case, none of us know. And if, Can I stop you for a second? Yeah, please, did go you ahead. Just say that I, did you just say that I said if we can't know, there's no point at all? I, that's what I thought I heard you said. Was I wrong? I said? I, that's oh, what yeah, I thought no. I heard you say. <laughs> no, no, sorry. That's okay. Not what I said. No, not even close. Then I drove us way off a cliff. I'm sorry. We are in the weeds. <laughs> no, we are in the weeds, Scott. No, no, no reason to continue that. Um, okay. But, no, 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 no. But, but I think I know where you're going. And the thing is, uh, is, yes, we can, if we engage in the conversation, reach common understanding of things. Mm-hmm. There are certain things I think are outside of the scope of our common understanding. Um, you know, it's like, you know, the whole thing, what happened before the start of the universe? I think it's a stupid thing to even ponder it because I don't think it's within our mental capacity to even think about it. But let's not get sidetracked on that. Nope. But, you know, if it, it, does the Earth revolve around the sun? Am I 100% certain of that? Yes, I am. And I can say that without hesitation, without fear of being... You know, the orbits around the sun. What's you know, the period. effective What's right? the effective difference between 100% and 99.9%? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. I don't either, which you is know, why it, I don't say yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, there's no difference in why, what does it matter, right? I what, mean, no, what matters ideologically for me is really? that... It, it, yeah, no, it, it, it does. Uh, ideologically, I would say that if I have 100% certainty about a thing, that I am making a claim that I know all of the things about that that would get me there. And I don't know 100% about anything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I... Oh, uh, certainly, certainly you do, man. Certainly. I, no, are you, are you no. Talking, are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to, I'm talking to you. There you go. Are, I, you, are you 100% sure of that? No. Really? Dude, I could wake up. I, mean, I could wake up. You could be a dream. But I'm operating with the best. I'm operating with the best tools that I can, Scott. I, I, I know. I know. There's this whole philosophical school and whole, you know, that that mm-hmm. has this thing. But let, 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 you know, if if we're getting real, right? You know, sitting around just talking to each other. Am I talking to you? Yes. We but but that. I think when you get that pragmatic, you get presumptive. It's all, I, I don't know. I think I think it's. I, I personally think it's folly. Once again, you know, get well, into the question of what is philosophy, right? And philosophy is just, you know, men and women sitting around talking about things and trying sure. to reach better understandings of things. Yeah. And if you know, if we want to, if we want to start our conversation with like, I don't really know, I'm talking to you. I mean, what are we really doing? Uh, we are blowing smoke up each other's ass. Doing philosophy. Um, <laughs> hey, Scott? Yeah, yeah. Scott? Uh, but, but what's the point, right? Okay, yeah. sorry. Well, no, I am okay. more of a pragmatist. I do, I do. That's why I'm not a, a huge fan of philosophy per se, because it's just, what's yeah, the point? I'm what is you. the practical we're application? We're psychologists, though. You know, we're training in psychology. Uh, we... <laughs> Well, so, Daniel, Daniel Dennett is uh, one of the few philosophers. Like, do you, this actually has a practical application. So, what's the point? Yeah, yeah. How can we use what you're, what the question you're asking? Well, you know, Scott. Well, while I'm enjoying this conversation, I feel like we've kind of yeah. lost the we've gone long. The, yeah. the, the thread. Yeah. Uh, so it's okay, but I want to go out on a good point, uh, Scott. I really appreciate you calling. This has been fun, and um, okay. I, I would love to have this conversation. I know it doesn't always lend itself to live shows. But yeah, dude, that's, I know. that's my jams, man. I'm happy you called. Yeah, <laughs> Can I make one closing comment about the original thing I talked about? Yeah, it'll be really quick. If you're and Eric, I want to suggest directly to you when you start talking about moral philosophy and trying to come up with morality, mm-hmm. start to think about how you respond to other people when they start to create a religion or try to justify religion. Because I'm pretty sure you'll come up with the fact that morality is. Uh, just another religion. Parting shot. Something for you to think um, about. <laughs> I, 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 we'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take care, buddy. Look, look at your language when you talk about it, and it's, it, it mirrors the exact language of an apologist. Yes, it always but, does with every moral philosopher. But you are throwing so. the baby out with the bathwater, and I really like that baby. Okay. All right. Take care, buddy. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs> uh, Darren, you stay on the line because I really want to talk to you. Um, there was a line in your book, Alpha God, um, that stuck with me. Oh, I like that. And the line was that um, 
when people are trying to justify their religion and say, well, it's got to be true because it does all of these good things, what you're forcing them to do is drink the bathwater to keep the baby. <laughs> or some, what was that about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it tastes good. I, yeah. I said, yeah, I forget. Yeah, but exactly, but, but. <laughs> that idea that you know, if you want to accept a good thing, you need to completely accept everything about it, even the bad, yeah. to be able to keep those good things. And yeah. I, I just thought that was very yeah. poignant. And the reason I'm think about, thinking about it is because I, I would not want to assume that I'm having to drink the bathwater to keep the baby. And that if the baby is, right, us trying to identify those things that we consider moral yeah. and then, you know create laws and build societies around those moral, you know, dictates and change them when necessary when we find out we're wrong. I would not want to call that a religion um, because it just, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like it has any of the trappings of religion as much as it does a, a fluid thing that changes and gets better as our society grows. Our, our moral psychology is very pragmatic. I mean, and it, and it has evolutionary roots. I mean, Robert Wright wrote a great book called The Moral Animal. So you can, you know, for anybody interested in, in understanding the, the evolutionary roots of morality that don't, that aren't related to religion. So I'm not sure what he meant by that. But then again, philosophy. But, yeah, and there are people in the live chat who are saying I completely missed what he had to say. I'm going to go back and listen and watch it and uh, see if I can learn more about it. I, I always go back and watch the show.